everyone, and thanks for having me. So the, the problem with this discussion about cryptocurrency and blockchain is like an iceberg. We tend to spend most of our time thinking about money, cryptocurrencies, and regulation. And today there's about half a billion, $500 billion or million, billion dollars invested in cryptocurrencies. But the truth is underneath the iceberg, over $5 trillion of technology investments from banks and governments will be rebuilt over the next 10 years using blockchain. So if you're looking for a discussion about currencies, this is not it. I'll be talking through what's actually happening at the coal face with real governments and real businesses using blockchain to solve real government, citizen, or use cases for business. So I work for a company that's backed by Samsung and backed by Sequoia. So the best way to predict the future in technology is to look back. So I'm going to take you back and explain in very simple terms what is really happening with blockchain. Because people don't really explain this in very simple, easy to understand speak. So nearly 30 years ago, something changed in the industry. And what changed was somebody called Linus Torvalds wrote a program called Linux. Now Linux was an operating system. But what he did, he revolutionized the ways IT and technology is developed. So over the last 20 years, Linux has replaced nearly every core operating system that you know, but you don't even know this. 90% of the internet that we use runs on Linux. 50% of all the data centers around the world run on Linux, but it's boring. This will happen with blockchain within the next 10 years, and let me explain why. So there's one thing that technology teaches us, History does not repeat itself, but there's a rhythm with certain technologies. If the technology gets momentum with developers and with customers, it finds its role. And this is what's happening with blockchain. Most transformative technologies take around 10 years before they really arrive for business, and then another five years before they get adopted. And we are in year 11 of blockchain. So the only thing that is for sure in the next 10 years that will be disruptive it's what's called hybrid. There's lots of theories around blockchain, private, public blockchains. The truth is business and governments don't work that way. Businesses and governments need to serve their customers, their stakeholders, add new technology and still use their existing skills and technologies. So the way technologies like Linux, like Hadoop, like AI, machine learning, cloud computing are evolving is through a hybrid world. And this is what's happening with blockchain. There's lots of hype around blockchain. The truth is, there are probably around 200 customers and projects around the world and governments who are building very large-scale blockchains. We happen to be involved with some of them. The one thing that's also going to hit us within the next five years is the first mass-produced quantum computer. People think this is 10 or 20 years away. There's an arms race going on between Google, Huawei, some governments, and some research institutes to build the first quantum computer which will break most algorithms out there. So as these smart cities get formed and you connect societies, by the time you make them work, you're going to have another problem. Somebody's going to be able to hack into all the data. So the more progressive governments and businesses are looking further ahead than blockchain. They're looking at how do we control the identities and data of citizens in a way that can protect us. So what does this mean? The truth is we want to connect everything. We want to connect the cloud, we want to connect businesses, we want to connect consumers. The truth is, to make this really work, there's one problem that needs to be solved, and it's this issue of trust. You need to be able to trust people, companies, business, governments, when you can't trust each other. And this is really why blockchain is being adopted by businesses and governments. It's an elegant way to create trust between parties where you do not have to trust each other. There are many other technologies you could use but blockchain or distributed ledger is the right way to do this. So a trust layer allows you to exchange das data and assets in a very interesting way. So what does this mean? The truth is the last 30 years, businesses have not changed their way they build their businesses from a technology. You have company A and company B, they're building their infrastructure, they're buying databases, they're buying software, they're configuring in this, they're adding consulting, and they make this very complex stack. And the only thing that changed in the last 30 years was the internet, really. That was the only revolution that happened the last 20, 30 years. The internet allowed businesses and governments to share data globally. With blockchain, a blockchain architecture, something else is happening now. 
you can rebuild or build new ecosystems and use cases where you can push out your business logic and your data across your supply chain, across your ecosystem, without losing trust, without losing data privacy. And this is the transformative effect of blockchain. So as much as there is hype out there, there are a limited number of governments and businesses using this already to build new ecosystems where they can build so-called smart contracts, which in effect is a fancy way of executing an agreement. So I, you can trade or exchange value in an automated way that cannot be tampered with, can be trusted and is recorded. There is no other way to do this other than with distributed ledger technologies elegantly. So this is why the more progressive governments are looking at blockchain. So who are we? We are a company backed by Samsung. We, are, we have been based in Korea for five years with a company that you probably have never heard of, but probably has the most use cases in the world beyond IBM in, in production blockchains. We've been doing this for five years. It's a SWAT team of engineers, ex-Samsung. They're experts in open source, databases, and integration. And integration is very important because it's easy to make a blockchain work as a demo, as a proof of concept, as a sandbox. But getting a blockchain system to work with your database, whether that's Oracle or SAP or Active Directory, and building a privacy layer around this and integrating that is not easy to do. We've been doing this for five years. We've understood where blockchain does not work and where it does work. And this technology is now being made available on a global basis. We have developed this in Korea first, but now we're bringing this technology to the world. And we've focused on the Middle East for one specific reason. There's lots of talk about blockchain and digital societies, but very little truth in reality in execution. Lots of PowerPoint, lots of projects. We can help certain organizations if they are stuck or unable to deliver working solutions. We believe we have the skills and the team that can help. So we're looking for progressive organizations, governments or businesses who are further advanced than the average blockchain company and are failing with their partner or are taking too long to build a real system. Our objective is to deliver real systems in time for Expo 2020, October next year. We have the team, we have the focus, we've partnered with one of the private offices here to enable the relationships here and we are available to talk to any organization that is serious about blockchain. So let me explain a bit more about the company. We've been doing this for five years. We've worked with nearly every industrial company in Korea, Samsung, Huawei, not Huawei, Hyundai, uh, the government. We've built exchanges. We've been doing this for five years, almost in stealth mode to prove the capability before we bring this out on a global basis. So what does this mean? It means now, there's actually a blockchain architecture that was built for business. This is not a variation of Ethereum or Bitcoin or somebody else's code. This was built from the ground up as a clean room implementation. It's an open source platform like Linux. It's called Ergo. And what it is, to put you some perspective, on the left are the cloud vendors, the people who typically host your data. In the Middle East or here, it would be companies like Etisalad or Do. On the left, you have the cloud vendors, and on the right, you have the so-called enterprise blockchains. These blockchains are really private blockchains, in effect, databases, built for government or built for database, but they're private. So we are a hybrid, because we do something different. We've built, from the ground up, a hybrid architecture, which allows you to use private blockchains, a public blockchain, and your existing data centers together in an integrated way without having to rewrite software. So Ergo is in effect three things. It allows you, the Magenta is a public chain. This is a new public chain built for high performance. It's globally dispersed. It uses delegated proof of stake. It runs on a global network of nodes, but these nodes are not things you can buy with your coins or by mining. These are nodes run by telcos very large telecommunications companies who have the data centers, have the infrastructure and the security to not only host the chain, they can host the data, your government data, your banking data, your private data. So we have serious node providers and we're building that ecosystem around the world. But we also have a product which is the enterprise version, which is the private implementation. So if you cannot share your data because of regulation or you do not want to share it, 
We will help you build a private blockchain so you can have the highest level of performance, security, and governance locally. We also will allow you to connect this to any infrastructure you like. You want to make it work on Amazon Web Services or Do or Etisalad or IBM's cloud, we can do that. If you want to make it work on your own data center, we can also do that as well. So we combine three things that no other company provides. A clean, public blockchain that's built for scale and performance. The ability to build private chains like a private cloud that are very high performance, locally distributed, and connect these systems with your existing legacy systems, whether it's Oracle or DB2 or SAP or something else. That is what we build. So it's a hybrid architecture. This is geared up for governments or organizations that want to build an ecosystem, that want to share infrastructures, share data amongst different organizations. So we operate in a number of sectors. We haven't picked them, they picked us. These are projects that came to us over the last five years. In general, we can operate in any industry where you need to exchange data, whether that's oil, it's real estate, it's money, it's other assets. If you can digitize the asset, we can probably help you build an ecosystem that's secure and scalable and high performance. So this is a list of customers we already have. Each one of these is a Korean company. You may recognize some of the names. They're not small companies. Hyundai, Samsung, the government. These all started as pilots or proof of concepts four or five years ago, and they've moved on to a second or third or fourth generation. If you look at the bottom right, see if this works here. Hyundai Auto Ever, Hyundai builds cars, they build power stations, they build hotels, they have a finance arm, and they have a very large used car division. In Korea, the used cars are being tampered with. People are changing the mileage when they sell them. So they asked us to build a complete supply chain from the, the, the moment the steel arrives in the factory to the production line that generates the car, to the specification, to the VIN number, to the time it arrives at the distributor and it's sold, everything is digitized on a blockchain controlled by Hyundai. When I buy the car and then I service it six months later, the, the network will download not only the history of the car, it will almost, it also download my driving behavior. Did I drive fast or hard? Did I crash? Everything will be recorded. So when the car is sold, and Hyundai says, we give you a three-year warranty, and we guarantee the car's not been in an accident, there's 100% proof of this. This is being built now, and now Hyundai wants to open this up to third parties, insurers, finance companies, and they do that through a public layer. So we build a private layer, and we provide them access to a public layer where they can exchange their data with other ecosystems. So Ergo allows you to build blockchains for different industries, different use cases, and connect them and share data and assets through a public layer without the data leaving your data center. It's called asset bridging, or if you want to use a technical term, it's Merkle bridges. So we are, we are here in the Middle East. We've built a SWAT team. I've relocated my core team here in the Middle East. We're looking for interested parties. We will talk to anybody who's serious. So I'll repeat that. Anybody who's serious, and that means any organization, any government department, any business that understands what they want to do with blockchain, has a use case, and wants to get this deployed within three, six, nine months. Our objective is to deliver a number of reference cases by the time of Dubai Expo 2020. We are here, we have a technical team, a SWAT team, and the same method we're using here was used 20 years ago when I ran Red Hat. I built the Red Hat business internationally outside of America, and we used a very simple technique. We found interested companies, we qualified them, we interviewed them, and when we realized they were serious, we put people on the project, the best developers in the world. We have those developers within our organization. They're available if you're serious. My name's Phil Zamani. The company's called Blocko. The technology's called Ergo. We have a standout side where we can walk you through some of the use cases. Thanks for your time.